Uh, let's do one thing. Let's uh, talk about uh, Dixon Technologies because that really is the stock of the moment right now. I mean, uh, the company has reported a very strong performance yet again in Q1 with the earnings coming above street estimates. It's their mobile and EMS division revenue contribution which has seen a very big surge. But their consumer electronics and appliances revenue contribution has decreased. To discuss more on this, we have Saurabh Gupta, the CFO of Dixon Technologies who joins us now. Uh, Saurabh, thanks a lot for joining in. You know, it was a very strong performance in the mobile segment and because of which your, you know, your numbers are well built above the street estimates. I just wanted to understand in the mobile and EMS division, your revenue contribution is now 79%. Do you hope to take it up further and what kind of sustainable growth rate do you see in this business on the top line? Yeah, thank you, Sonia. Thank you for having me. Uh, so as mentioned multiple times, Sonia, I think so mobile is the largest trigger for our growth uh, because that is the largest opportunity pool as compared to all the other verticals that we have. I think so in the next couple of years, I think so IT will start playing a bigger role. Uh, they will be, uh, of course, they, they will be the next uh, growth engine for us after mobiles but it'll take us another 12 to 15 months for that. But clearly I see mobile uh, contributing a larger portion, but even the other verticals like uh, telecom, uh, IT hardware going forward will start contributing a meaningful, meaningful number. Okay, so in terms of a growth rate, um, you know, for the mobile business, I just want to understand in FY25 and FY26, um, what kind of, I mean, do you have any kind of targets, particularly for this segment? So last year, uh, last year we did almost 6.7 million smartphones. Uh, this year uh, we are targeting almost uh, 28 to 30 million smartphones. Our acquisition of uh, iSmartU is also in the final stages of getting completed. We got the CCI approval and uh, in the next uh, one week or so we will complete all other formalities and start consolidating those financials. So 25 million is what we expect outside of iSmartU, uh, which is through which is for brands like ITEL, Techno and Phoenix, and 5 million we expect through ITEL brands. Uh, so clearly we will have the largest capacity in India of almost 45 million smartphones and then 10 million gets added through iSmartU. So we'll have another largest capacity and almost we have 55 to 60 percent of the opportunity pool which is available uh, in India. Uh, so clearly we have created a large capacity. Now the idea is to go deep, uh, deep into more manufacturing, deepen the level of manufacturing, get into components, precision components, mechanicals, uh, also, we have already finalized the technology part on the display. So the idea is to create more technical skill set around that, create more competitive mode and acquire the competitive strength by getting deep into components. Okay. Hi, Saurav. Good morning. Good to see you, Vin. So 28 to 30 million for this year. And I think next year you're talking about 40 million in the mobiles business, right? Yeah, it broadly it should be somewhere around 40, 40 odd million, yeah. Okay, so mobile is the one that's going to be driving. But as you mentioned briefly, that the <clears throat> IT co components of products, that's going to be the next uh, driver of growth. But I think majority of it will come in FY26. In the past, you've hinted that the TAM, the target uh, market, could be approximately 50,000 crores as well. How do you see revenue shape up, say, in FY26? What kind of a revenue number can IT products uh, uh, report for you? Yeah, so Nigel, clearly IT hardware is a 10 billion opportunity in India. And of course, the production value should be somewhere around uh, 50 to 55,000 odd crores. And clearly, like the way we have always captured a large market share in other categories, our, our aim is always to take a 20-25% market share over a period of time. Uh, so what we have committed to the government is uh, revenues of almost 48,000 crores over a period of six years. Uh, now, if you look at, we have already closed contracts with Lenovo and Acer. Acer, we are already manufacturing. And Lenovo, we start manufacturing by Q3. Also, we are we are also in the final stages of closing with two large brands. In fact, those brands are already on board. We are just concluding the final agreements with them. And those brands, we start manufacturing by the next financial year in our, in our campus in Chennai. So practically, we have now all the four large global brands out of the five global brands. Uh, so it will be a large revenue driver for us going forward. And clearly, next year, uh, yeah, we can we can hope to do our revenues of anywhere between uh, two and a half to four thousand odd crores, depending on what time we are able to start in our Chennai, Chennai campus. I think the street is working with a number closer to around four thousand crores. You think that's gettable for FI twenty six? Yeah, broadly it should be in the range of I think to three three and a half thousand. That that we are slightly more confident on that. But yeah, if we stretch ourselves and if we are able to roll out our campus slightly early, yeah, we can we can stretch it to four thousand. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> got it. Uh, Sorry, so two more. Brands you almost have got signed up, right? Something you'd hinted earlier as well. 
Uh, so we should have an announcement soon this quarter. Yeah, you should have an announcement soon on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got it. What about uh, some again something we've uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of discussed earlier? Industrial uh, uh, sort of EMS segment uh, on the automotive side, etc. Where are plans there, and by when can we see uh, you know things being fructified? Yeah, so, so if you look at our strategy of setting up campus in Chennai, it's mainly aligned towards uh, getting into PCBs for industrial and automotives because that's where the large hub for electronics is, uh, for automotive sector is. Uh, so we are in discussion with a large brand and also we are in some kind of discussions uh, on the automotive side. So my sense by next financial year, uh, we should have some numbers uh, coming in from this segment as well. So we have already, uh, as I mentioned, we have created infrastructure, we, have, we are building on a team for that. And we think it's a, it's a code for us, and we'll definitely uh, have a big crack on it. When do you start? When do you uh, when do you start production, uh, Saurabh? Uh, hopefully in the next uh, twelve months, in anywhere between nine to twelve months, hopefully. And that tie up with a major brand, uh, that should happen uh, th this quarter. Uh, it will take some time, but the discussions are going on uh, very well. Yeah. Okay, uh, I got it. Uh, so, uh, just talk to us a little bit about uh, overall margins as well. How's the environment on the sort of cost side, uh, pricing, et cetera, looking? And what should we expect for F525 overall? Yes, broadly, I think so. Our, our uh, numbers will only get better from here uh, on account of that acquisition, which will now start getting consolidated. And also, if you look at quarter two, is always seasonally a better quarter as compared to quarter one. And a lot of our uh, customers in mobiles have now ramped up, and the numbers will only increase from here ahead of the festive season. So we expect better margins in Q2. Overall, uh, I said uh, I think so. We should be somewhere around four percent kind of levels, and then uh, the strategy to get into more backward integration will only help us improve our margins year on year, uh, because this all this component play is very highly creative on margins even though they may have a lower set turns, but yeah, they're very positive. Uh, they'll have positively have, have an impact on the margins here. Yeah. Okay, so sort of just one question before we let you go. Any plans to exit the lighting segment or do you believe that will grow? Because it's, currently it's quite small. No, Nigel, I think so the worst is behind us. We had a tough time, tough, tough last 12, 15 months. There was a lot of pricing erosion which has happened in this industry. But now I think so we are uh, getting our are getting us uh, whole whole thing back on this. So we are ex expanding into new product categories of floodlights, streetlights, professional lighting. We're getting into some premium product categories. We're getting into backward integration. And if you look at the revenues for Q1, it has actually grown by 15% as against Q4. And we are also working on some export orders. So clearly, by my sense is the verse is behind us. The, comp uh, the pricing has kind of stabilized now. Uh, and it's an important play for us. It's an ODM business for us with seven, eight, seven, two, seven, nine percent kind of margin. Right. <coughs> and so we'll continue to. Yeah, we are, there's no plan to exit out of that business here. Thanks for clarifying that, and wish you well for the remainder of this quarter. Congratulations on a rather good showing. The stock has seen a big run, but it continues to move up because of the positive commentary that you'll have given on the con call as well as on this interview.